Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am happy to be with you for another author interview. I hope you're having a great day. Hope that you have uh, some good weekend plans, uh, whatever they might be, staying in, going out. You know what? I talked to somebody. I know I talk about the weather, but um, I'm old. Cut me some slack. Uh, I, I talked to somebody recently, and she was in Wisconsin, and she said it was negative 22 where she was and I said oh my gosh it's currently 68 right now and I felt bad because that is a 90 degree temperature swing we don't need a 90 degree temperature swing we could have met happily somewhere she could have been you know warmer we could have been a little colder I would have been happy to send her 30 degrees (laughs) so that she could although my husband would not have been thrilled with 38 68 you know 30 degrees um he would not have been happy he he likes the 68 in january but um yeah she was like um i'm gonna move to northern california or florida or someplace where it's not negative 22 and that of course was before you factor in the wind the wind chill um so wow i just I'm used to, I I grew up in Montana, you know this, I I know negative zero, or you know, negative zero, I know negative, uh, below below zero weather, I I know this, and I understand that it happens, and I understand that there can be huge temperature swings, but it still baffles me, flabbergasts me, amazes me when I think that, um, you know, Wisconsin and California are not that far apart, but in terms of weather, that's pretty crazy. Random, random story has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today, but uh, just thought I'd throw that out there and apologize for the weather that I'm having. <laughs> if it's if it's a 90 degree temperature difference from the weather that you're having, I'm so sorry. Let's talk about a book, uh, specifically the book Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams, written by Anthony Iani and Rob Keast. Anthony is my guest today. Let me go ahead and give you the description from the back of the book. Sports fans will root for the underdog. Parents, teachers, and coaches will gain insight into the experience of an autistic child, and everyone will triumph in the achievements of Centered. They don't know me. They don't know what I'm capable of. Diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder, a form of autism, as a toddler, Anthony Iani wasn't expected to succeed in school or participate in sports, but he had other ideas. As a child, Iani told anybody who would listen, including head coach Tom Izzo, that he would one day play for the Michigan State Spartans. Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams is the first-hand account of a young man's social, academic, and athletic struggles and his determination to reach his goals. In this remarkable memoir, Iani reflects on his experiences with both basketball and the autism spectrum. Centered, an inspirational sports story in the vein of Rudy, reveals Iani to be unflinching in his honesty, generous in his gratitude, and gracious in his compassion. So that is the story of, or the the description on the back of Centered, and (laughs) Michigan State University. I know this makes me, you know, a total Montana dork, but whenever I see MSU, I think Montana State University, which is the rival of the school that I went to, um, University of Montana. And so whenever I see MSU, I think Bobcats, right? This is not the Bobcats, of course. (laughs) This is Michigan State University. Completely different. Plus, my husband is a big Michigan fan, not Michigan State. I was I was confused the whole time I read this. Not not confused, but like my brain kept really wanting me to go to other colleges in my head while I was reading this and I had to keep reminding myself that it was not that MSU and it was not that Michigan (laughs) completely different school 
I, I think I'm tired. I sound all congested in the interview. I, I think that this um, never-ending sinus infection is just maybe maybe it's uh, affecting my brain, and I've gotten a little loopy. I think I've gotten a little loopy. Send help, y'all. Let's go ahead and turn to the interview with Anthony. I I love this story. I love the way he tells the story. Um, I so enjoyed this book, and I am excited to share this interview with you. So let's go ahead and turn to the interview. Again, It's the book is called Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. The author is Anthony Iani. Hey, Anthony. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. I'm happy to have you here. We're going to talk about your memoir. It's called Center, Centered, excuse me, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. But before we get to the um, the memoir, if you could, this is actually kind of a funny thing because I'm about to ask you to share a little bit about yourself, but it's a memoir, so you can be sharing a right. little bit about yourself. <laughs> but that's, you know, let's start with just sharing a little bit about yourself in terms of who you are and, you know, let, letting my listeners get to know you a little bit. Absolutely. So I'm Anthony Ianni. I'm a national motivational speaker, um, self-advocate and author. Um, when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with pervasive developmental disorder, which is on the autism spectrum. And when I was five years old, a group of doctors and professionals had told my family that because I have auti- a type of autism, I would barely succeed or achieve anything in my life. They told my family I would barely graduate from high school, never go to college, never be an athlete, and likely would um, end up in a group institution with other individuals like myself for the rest of my life. Um, I wasn't told this story to my freshman year in high school. So that kind of became my motivation to go out and prove those people and then the other doubters and naysayers that had my life wrong. Um, had to work hard at everything, you know, from basketball to my social life and especially school, because I'm not afraid to admit this. I wasn't the smartest kid that went to my high school. Um, and I had a lot of support, you know, whether it's from teachers, coaches, teammates, friends, and more importantly, my family. So um, I graduated from Okemos High School in 2007, where I then went on to Grand Valley State University for two years on a full scholarship for basketball. Things didn't quite work out for me there, so I decided to leave Grand Valley State to fill um, my ultimate lifelong dream, which was to play for Coach Tom Izzo and be a Michigan State Spartan. So I transferred to Michigan State, where I was a walk-on for two years. My senior year, co- uh, coaches awarded me a full-ride scholarship. I was a part of two Big Ten championship teams, a team that won a Big Ten tournament title, a team that went to a Final Four, Got to play with a great group of guys who to this day I'm proud to call all of my brothers. Um, But during my time at Michigan State, not only did I graduate with a bachelor's degree in sociology, um, but I also became the NCAA's first Division I college basketball player with an autism diagnosis. So um, now as a national speaker, I get to travel all over the country talking about uh, my story, uh, my book centered, and as well as doing um, uh, transitioning in life with autism presentations, as well as anti-bullying presentations as well. So I'm very busy guy these days, especially with the pandemic going on, um, doing a lot of traveling. So it's just been nice to get back, uh, back, back at it lately. Yeah. It, it's really a remarkable story. And actually the, some of the early chapters are kind of hard to read, you know, yeah. just because you can feel how hard it was for you just trying to live your little kindergarten life or, you know, however old you were and not understanding why people were being mean to you or why they didn't understand why you were, how you were, which was just, you know, your daily life. It, it was, it was hard <laughs> um, for, yeah. for me to read some of that and to read some of the opinions of people who didn't think that you would be able to do anything, just dismissing it so quickly. You know, you were only five mm-hmm. and they're like, well, he's never going to, he's never going to graduate. He's never going to do this. He's never going to do that. Um, I know some of that has changed a little bit, but uh, I, I can imagine that it's, It just depends on where you live in terms of how people react to autism diagnoses or, you know, how much they understand. So as you've gone through the process and this is a little off, you know, this isn't quite about the book, but have you noticed improvements in um, school systems and the way IEPs are written and the way children with autism are, are, uh, are educated? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, compared to where you know, it was for me personally, 25 years ago, um, you know, I, I, I've seen, you know, there are more resources, not just in certain states, but around our country. I mean, there's more ABA treatments and ABA therapies for young, young individuals with autism um, to go through. I mean, a perfect example would be, so I have twin, I have twin nieces, you know, my sister's kids, and they were diagnosed um, on the spectrum at, at a year and a half because both were nonverbal, um, both didn't communicate really well. And they got into ABA treatment and therapy and fast forward, like almost three and a half years later, 
you know, one's talking up a storm, is interacting and playing with my kids nonstop. Um, the other is still, you know, she's starting to interact a little more. Um, she's starting to communicate more and more. I mean, she said mom for the first time, like, you know, in her life, like eight months ago. And so just seeing what those kind of treatments and therapies do for my nieces just kind of showed me right there that, hey, we've come a long way away as far as where we're at from resources and everything like that. And and I've seen it in schools too. Like I've seen it how schools are really stepping up their game as far as making sure that those young students, especially those with autism, they're getting the they're getting the right resources and accommodations that they need to be successful in the classroom so they can be successful in the real world. And so, and like in IEPs, like I haven't been in an IEP meeting since my own, um, my senior year of high school, which was about 15, it'll be 15 years this fall. Um, but I've But I've heard how, a lot of people are really stepping up in their game to make sure that the IEP plans are followed to the T, that nobody's taking shortcuts and that if something works, they stick to it. If something doesn't work, then they go back to the drawing board and figure out, okay, if this didn't work with, with so-and-so, maybe this will, let's see if, let's see what happens. And so, so that's basically, you know, what I've seen, like we've definitely have come a long way away from what I've noticed. Um, but there's, there's still, there's still room for improvement, just like with everything in life, you know, whether it's your job or whether it's your, you know, whether it's a sport or whatever, but there's still room to improve, but I mean, we're definitely on the right track, that's for sure. Well, your nieces were certainly born into an incredible family too, you know, because <laughs> then, you know, the, 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 they recognize the signs, obviously your sister kind of knew what to look for. And yep. so that's wonderful that they're getting all the treatment that they need. I'm going to jump in here so we can take the first break of the podcast, but I did want to piggyback on the last comment and say toward the end of the book, Anthony writes, um, people ask him, you know, what if one of your sons turns out to be autistic? What then? And he says something like, well, we, you know, I'm certainly in a good position to be able to help them through that uh, experience. And, and my family is certainly in, in experience. And so um, I when he mentioned his nieces both have autism, I just I resonated with what he had said about his family and, and reading the book, really, his family is so supportive and so willing to do whatever it takes to make Anthony's dreams, goals, ambitions a success. And so just, um, yeah, I just wanted to to mention that comment and to say that it did resonate with me when he was talking about his nieces. So let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Anthony Iani about his memoir, Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. Let's return to the interview. So again, the book is called Centered, Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. Can you talk about, obviously you're a speaker and you talk about this all the time, but then what went into the decision to write the memoir? So it was just people getting in my ear. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I'm on the road a lot, speaking in schools, doing a lot of anti-bullying presentations uh, for grades three through 12. And it was about, about seven, eight years ago, I was speaking at a school in Macomb County here in Michigan. And one of the principals came up to me and said, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, putting your entire life story in, in print? Because, you know, my, you know, my students have only maybe heard one fourth of your life story here today, but I really think they could benefit more and more from the other potential stories that you may have growing up dealing with bullies from your autism diagnosis to where you where you're at today and even your times in Michigan State. And he was in and she's a Spartan Michigan State grad, too. And she was like, you know, as a Spartan, I, I would love to hear more stories about Coach Izzo and behind the scenes, you know, from Michigan State basketball. And my, my response was, eh, I don't know, like I'm, I'm on the road a lot, you know, four or five days a week. I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. And so 
kind of fast forward a couple of years later, I sat down with somebody, you know, a friend of mine, I was like, you know what, like, I, I think it's time. I, I think it's really time to start considering putting my entire life story into a memoir. And because I really think that not just, you know, young students, but I think teachers, administrators and parents and those who are affected by autism, even self-advocates can learn a lot from just my life story and just learn more about what autism is. And and the one thing that I've loved that I loved about, or I should say love about the book is that, you know, it's not just an autism thing, but it's a multiple, you know, platform book. It could be autism, it could be sports, it could be people who are looking for hope and inspirational stories, it could be look for people who are looking for motivational stories to pick them up every day. Um, people who just love a good underdog story. And so that was the one benefit about writing this book with my co-author Rob Keese was that we both knew that this book could really target multiple audiences, not just one specific audience with like the autism audience, but it can go beyond that. And so, and that was one of the things why I also wanted to write this book was not just to get my story out there, but to hit multiple audiences and target multiple people and educate them more about what autism is. And how did the, um, so you have a, a co-author, Rob Keast, how did that mm -hmm. relationship work in terms of writing the memoir? Oh, it was fantastic. Um, so I was actually introduced to Rob um, by my resource, by my middle school resource room teacher, uh, Susie Hall. So um, Mrs. Hall was my resource room teacher for three years in middle school before I went to high school. And um, when I was looking for somebody to help me write it, um, she immediately got to, like she immediately reached out to me and said, hey, you want to talk to my husband's cousin, you know, Rob Keese. And he's like, you know, he's a Michigan State grad. He you know, got his degree in journalism. He's work for different, you know, magazine companies. He's worked for different publishing companies. Like he knows a lot of authors. He teaches literature at Wyandotte Roosevelt High School, not too far from you. I was like, yeah, give me his number. We'd love to meet him. So right when he and I first sat down and we actually had lunch, um, that was our first meeting. When we sat down, we instantly connected. Like not just because, you know, we had a lot in common and, you know, we're both Michigan State alums, but like, you know, once Rob got a good understanding of my background and my story, and once he had more conversations with Mrs. Hall, like he definitely understood, you know, right away how impactful a story like this could be. And so, so we, we, we developed a plan together. We sat down, um, we did like four or five interviews, like, you know, a couple, you know, a couple months later that were like two, three hours each. Um, and just sitting there, you know, Rob really got to understand me more. Um, I got to understand him more about what he does and how he does things and what he likes to do. Um, but he learned more about me and my background. So, but at the same time, when we did these interviews, like it brought, it brought back a lot of memories for me. It really did. And so, um, but then, you know, we do the interviews and then Rob, would, you know, would write up a chapter and then I would read through the chapter and then he'd say, Hey, what do you think if we add this in there? And then I will come back and go, let's try put this in here in this part of the chapter and see how it flows. And so we really did a lot of tag teaming on this thing. And so he, he had a lot of conversations with my, with my family, my parents and my sister. He talked to a couple of friends of mine as well, just to get a better flow and, and um, idea of things. So, it, I mean, it's been a great, it's been a great partnership and, and we're not done yet. I mean, he and I still have a couple more projects that we want to work on together again. And, you know, so not only did, it ended up being a partnership between us, but it ended up becoming a, a very good friendship as well that we continue to this day. And so, and I think the one thing that has really made our, has made our relationship and partnership really good is just the constant communication we have with each other, whether it's through emails, phone calls, and texts, like, you know, I, he would call me at like 10 o'clock at night, you know, asking me, you know, certain questions about things. I would call him at 11 o'clock at night and be like, Hey, you know, what do you think we add this in the chapter? What do you think about this? You know, you know, the flow to me doesn't make sense here. What do you think if we did it this way? And so, and, and that was the other thing. If, if somebody agreed on something, like nobody, I mean, neither me or him snap back at each other. Like we listen to each other. Um, you know, we, we asked, you know, why it didn't make sense or why things made sense. And so just having that constant communication is what really made our partnership, you know, pretty darn successful in my opinion and why we both decided that we want to work on a couple more future projects together. Can you talk at all about what those future projects might be? <laughs> or is that, no. <laughs> so I, I don't want to get too, into too much detail, but, um, you know, right now, Rob and I, for our second project, uh, we actually have interviewed. So what I told Rob, what I wanted to do was, um, you know, Centered is always going to be an incredible book for me because it's my life story. But I, I told Rob, the second thing I really wanted to work on was kind of develop, kind of doing a project where, you know, we, we interview athletes on the autism spectrum and their families and coaches and talk about their experiences, what worked, what didn't work, you know, why it was successful, why it wasn't successful. 
and basically kind of make this like an educational book for coaches and teachers and young student athletes with autism or even just young student athletes in general to understand, you know, what an individual with autism, an athlete with autism may go through on a daily basis. And, and not just that, but it could be a guidebook for coaches who may potentially have individuals one day that they may coach. And so, you know, we've already, we've interviewed about, you know, 15 different young athletes with autism, um, either the current or former. And so, you know, it's just been really fun to enjoy. And so, you know, th this is the kind of my niche, if you will, you know, I actually had a conversation with Dr. Temple Grandin about this back in November. And, you know, I've always told people, Sarah, like, you know, she's kind of that person I want to have the torch passed down to one day, because just like what she does and the incredible things she does for the autism community and just how inspirational she is to those in the community and outside of the community. You know, that's part of the reason why I got into this, you know, what I do for self-advocacy and, and speaking is because of her. And I want to be that person that she passes, uh, passes the torch down to one day. And, you know, she, she's known that for years. And so, um, so we both, um, co-headline a conference in Nebraska two months ago in, um, in Kearney, Nebraska. And so we, we went out to dinner afterwards and she was just asking me how things were going. And I told her kind of what I told you about my second project, you know, that my co-author and I are working on. And she asked me what it was about. And I told her, and she, she just looked at me and goes, that right there is your niche. She said, my niche is science and cattle. You know, that's why I've, I've been so successful doing what I'm doing, but you, that could be your niche is sports and autism. Like that's something that nobody else from a self-advocacy and from a speaking standpoint has done. Like you could really kind of take off from there because of the second project. She's like, I'll endorse it for you. I'll do whatever you want. So for my mentor and my, one of my role models and icons in my life, for her to say that to me, it really meant a lot because that told me right there, like, Hey, you know, Senator is always going to be there. That's not going away. But this second project could be really the one that kind of gets you to this point as far as as far as your career goes, as far as like your niche and everything like that. So so we're really excited. To, we're really excited to be currently working on this. And so it's going to be a while before we get it published, because obviously we're still in the early stages. But, you know, when I told Rob about, you know, working on the second project, he didn't even hesitate. And, you know, the, the third project I would like to do, you know, it might be a couple of years before I even started is I, I do want to write a kid's book. You know, that's, that's, a, that's my mom's dream right there that she, that she wants her son uh, to do. And, you know, I'm going to make my mom's dream a reality in a couple of years. The, an overarching, that's awesome. I mean, there's so many awesome things in what you just said from, you know, your mentor relationship and the encouragement that you're receiving, but also then writing the children's book for your mom, because your mom was such a huge advocate for you. And um, I'm so impressed with your parents um, and especially your mom, because she kind of had the day to day, yeah. feelings, you know, with you and trying to figure out how to make it so that you could function in the world with everyone else, you know, um, I right. don't want to <clears throat> just in a, in a way that made sense to you. Um, and I really appreciated that about her. Um, what I like about the book is that it talks about obviously your experiences as a child and going through school, but what we don't often hear about is that autistic children become autistic adults. Mm, and, yep. um, you know, they kind of, there's a lot of focus on aut autistic children. That's, that's great. That needs to be talked about and how we can um, integrate them into education, but that doesn't stop once you graduate from high school or college or, right. you know, whatever it is that you want to do. So I really appreciate that, that your book focuses beyond even high school and, and that you're doing this work, bringing awareness because, you know, it does, you don't just stop being autistic. <laughs> no, you, you don't, you, you really don't. And that's the one thing that, you know, I told Rob that I really wanted to hit home with was that, you know, I wanted to show folks that, yeah, just cause I achieved all these great things in high school and then achieved my dream and was able to do things in college that nobody ever thought would even be possible. Like, Jobs, as Kobe Bryant once said in the NBA finals in 2009, like jobs not finished, you know, jobs not finished yet. So, so I'm always going to be, because people ask me all the time, like, do you still have autism? Like, it, is it gone? And I'm like, no, like autism is always going to be a part of my life, no matter what, like you can't get rid of it. <laughs> like, and, and plus like, I don't ever want to get rid of it. Cause I, I so I've always told people, Sarah, that if somebody had offered me a $5 million contract or a $10 million contract saying, and in that contract, it goes, we'll pay you $10 million if you try, you know, if you try this cure for autism, like it'll make everything in your life, like be completely normal. You want to worry about the characteristics that you deal with on a daily basis, being on the autism spectrum. All you got to do is sign it. It's $10 million and it's yours. And I would tell people all the time, like I would rip that contract up in that person's face because 
I'm proud to be on the autism spectrum because autism is made autism is what made me into who I am today. Autism is what helped me make history not once but twice in my life. And that's why I've always encouraged people on the autism spectrum to be proud of who you are because you know, I was just like those young kids at their age. I dealt with those early struggles in my life. I dealt with the loud noises. I dealt with the overload um, of crowd noises and arena noises. Like I've dealt with so many different things in my life that I've had to overcome. But I look back on those times and go, you know what? I understand what those kids go through. I understand what this individual may go through. And so, but the one thing I'm most proud of is Anytime I meet a young individual on the autism spectrum, whether they're high functioning or low functioning, and they hear about my story, like it puts a smile on my face because number one, it shows them that I relate to them, that I've been there before. I've done that and that I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that they get the right help and resources that they need no matter what. And so that's the one thing too, Sarah, I've always prided myself on my whole life. And a lot of people, you know, have always said to me, well, why would you even do that? And what I pride myself a lot on in my life is I put a lot of people before myself, but I put others before myself um, because I want to make sure that other people, whether I know them or not, are taken care of and make sure they're helped out before I am. Um, a lot of people think I'm crazy for that because they've, they've all said, well, try to be selfish in your life, you know, do what's best for you, you know, do what makes you happy. Um, but I put so many people before me in my life that you know, I, t- I take a lot of great pride in that, and especially the autism community. And that's a community I'm always going to put before, and, you know, anything else in my life. Time for our second break of the podcast, but stick around because we're ta- we are going to talk about time travel, sort of. Not really, but stick around. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Anthony Iani. I, I resonate with what you say. Uh, something that I always find fascinating with, um, this is going to sound weird, but like sci-fi and time travel is, you know, you change yeah. one little thing and, and it can change so much. And um, if you had changed not being autistic, you may not have been quite so, such a fanatic about Right. going and playing for, for Michigan state, you know, you might right. not have pursued that dream and yes, your life could have been just as great, but that gave you that, that focus. And you really, you, you wanted to do that. You wanted to prove that. And in right. so doing, you played with Draymond green you, um, you ended up in sports illustrated, you know, you did all those things that you, we kind of had a dream about and you may or may not have done that had you not been autistic. And so it's, I love that you see that as an asset or, you know, if not an asset, just something that's part of your life and that, that helps you or, uh, you know, that affects how you see the world. Right. Exactly. And, you know, I call it more of a blessing than anything, you know, because, you know, I'm I'm very Catholic. I'm not afraid to admit that, you know, the good Lord blessed me with autism for a reason. And so, you know, he puts me on a certain path in life for a reason. And, uh, you know, and you're right. Cause like one of my biggest strengths being on the autism spectrum is, when you give me something to focus on, I'm going to focus on it. And so that's why I was able to be so successful at basketball, you know, at high school and in college is that, you know, when it came to the games or the practices, you know, I was focused in the whole, like I was zoned in the whole time. And so that's why I was able to like have that success. Now, 
if I if I was on the autism spectrum, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't have had that that focus, you know, because I still would have focused. But I think being on the autism spectrum you know, made that focus level even more like, you know, even better for me, to be honest. And so, um, but yeah, like like I said, I'm always going to say, you know, loud and proud that I'm proud to have autism. Do you have advice for someone who may want to write a memoir, especially someone on the, on the autism spectrum who might want to write about their experiences? So my advice would be, you know, find your reasoning and passion for that memoir or for that book. Because, you know, early on, you know, when people were getting in my ear, like, oh, do this, do that. And I was just like, eh, like, I don't know. Like when I finally got my reasoning as to why I was writing my memoir, why I was writing, you know, my book with Rob. Um, when I finally got my reasoning at reasons as to why, which was to get my story out there, to educate people more about what autism is, to continue to give people hope, motivation, and inspiration in the world today. Um, when I had my reasons why, that's when I knew, okay, let's do this thing. Let's, let's push forward. So my advice would always be, you know, to young potential authors out there, especially those on the autism spectrum who want to write their memoir, write their story make sure you have your reasons for doing it. Hey, don't, don't just do it because you want to write a book. Don't just do it because you want to get your story out there. Like do it because you want to educate people more about what autism is. You want to talk about your stories, your struggles. So people don't go through the same things that you may have gone through in your life or, you know, teachers and administrators can learn more from your struggles. And so they could take your life story and bring them back to the classroom in the real world. And so make sure you have good reasonings for it. And because I know there are some out there that just want to make just want to make a buck or two, you know, off their book. And, you know, I didn't get into this to make a buck or two, you know, that's, you know, that's the last thing I worry about is like how much like my, my paychecks are going to be from selling my books. Like, I don't worry about that. Cause people ask me all the time, Sarah, like, Oh, how the sales going, you know, where, where are you ranked at in, in on Amazon? You know, are you, is it a bestseller yet? And I'm just like, I don't worry about that. Like if that happens, great, cool. I mean, that's, again, that's another blessing right there for me. Like, so I don't worry about that stuff. The only thing I worry about is, as long as people like it, as long as people are learning from it, as long as people get something out of it, whether it's just one thing, you know, that's all that matters to me. And so, but, you know, do like write your story and your memoir for your reasonings and make sure you have a lot of love and passion when you write it out. Thank you. Um, if there, is there one particular story that you tend to highlight in your when you speak with people or is there one particular story from the book that you would like to highlight here? Um, I don't know if, there, if, if it's kind of an overarching story, if there's one specific story that you share more than others. Oh man. Um, I think for me, um, you know, whenever I speak, like I, I talk about multiple stories that are in that book. Um, but I think for me personally, I think my favorite from the book, I, I don't share it a whole lot, but I'm going to start. I'm going to. I'm going to start uh, needing to start sharing it more and more. Eventually, was uh, the day that I received my Fulbright scholarship from Coach Izzo, and it was like two days before class started. And we had a team meeting, and he brought me in his office afterwards, and he just and he looked at me and goes, "I just want to let you know, I'm 99.9% sure that you're going to be on scholarship starting uh, tomorrow." And so I didn't know what to say. I just thanked him. You know, he thanked me for all the hard work that I do and just continue. And he was like, you know, just because, you know, just because this is part of your dream, you know, you're on scholarship now doesn't mean the work is done. Like I need you to continue to do what you're doing. And so, but I remember just going to my car and I got in my car and I immediately just started sobbing because, you know, that moment right there had to, like everything right there in that moment said and screamed, your dream is now officially a reality. Your dream was to be here at Michigan State and play for Coach Izzo, but it was also to be here on a full ride scholarship and here you are. And so, but that story to me also resonates to the scene in Rudy, you know, about Rudy Rudiger and Notre Dame football, um, you know, back in uh, the early nineties, it was a great under, it was a great movie and I still mm -hmm. love it. And um, it's one of my favorites. And so there's a scene in that movie where he gets his final um, acceptance letter to Notre Dame and he sits on a bench by by the river there that just looks across campus and at, over at the Notre Dame uh, Golden Tower there. And so uh, the Golden Dome, they call it in South Bend. And so he reads it. He's accepted in Notre Dame and he starts crying. And so 
that's a scene that I relate to right there. That was kind of like my Rudy scene, if you will. And so I know a lot of people have tried to compare my story to Rudy, obviously two completely different individuals, two completely different backgrounds and stories, but they are similar in a lot of ways. But that to me in, in, in the book centered is one of my favorites because, you know, it compares those two scenes, those two moments, but it also really kind of shows like how important it was for me in that moment to be on scholarship and to finally see that my dream had been completely achieved for good. Can you talk a little bit more about Coach Izzo for people who maybe um, don't follow college basketball or who don't live anywhere near Michigan? <laughs> um, and just talk about the importance of not only his place in your life, but also his place in the life of MSU. Well, it's funny you say that, you know, if you're not from Michigan, you don't know who he is. Like, I, I could tell you firsthand, Sarah, like, I go to a lot of places. I've been I've been to out in the middle of nowhere towns in Nebraska and people know who Tom Izzo is, which is, I mean, it, it's crazy. Um, so, but I tell people all the time, like Tom Izzo outside of my father is one of the greatest individuals I know in my life. Just what he does for players past and current, how much he cares about them. Like, you know, Draymond Green had a saying um, and the saying was you come to Michigan state as a kid and then you leave Michigan state as a man because of what him and his coaching staff do for you. Like, yes, they turn you into good basketball players, some some turn into great basketball players, but they also, him and especially Coach Izzo, he taught me more about life and character than anything. And I know that there are times where he's on he's on the TV and he's like getting in guys' faces. He's like yelling at them, you know, pushing them all the time, like pushing them to be their best. Um, I've always told people like that's Coach Izzo, the coach, because he wants his teams to be perfect. Like he wants you to play defense and offense perfect. He wants you to run the plays perfect, wants you to rebound perfect. So, you know, that's just Tom Izzo, the basketball coach. But Tom Izzo, the man, has taught me more about character than anything. He taught me how to not only respect others, but respect yourself. He told me how to treat others with with kindness and respect every day, making sure that you represent yourself that or that you don't just represent yourself every day. You represent multiple things in your life. You represent yourself. You represent your family. You represent your community, your high school, your university, everywhere you go. And and that's why, like, I didn't go out and like I didn't do a whole lot of partying or going out to bars during my time in Michigan State, because, you know, when you play at a big time Division One basketball program like Michigan State, you're under a microscope and people want to see you fail or they'll do anything to, to see you fail. And so he always taught me, you know, just to be careful with your surroundings. And so, you know, luckily for me, like I knew, I knew who my true friends were during my time at Michigan State. I made a lot of, a lot of incredible relationships and friendships because of that. Um, but just what he has done throughout his career, not just for the basketball program, but for Michigan State University in general, like, like Sarah, he puts an entire university of staff, faculty and students before himself. And that's the one thing I've always admired about him is that he puts everything at the university before himself. And, you know, it's funny. There was one time I brought in a group of people uh, to meet him one time and they were just in awe. And one person commented saying, oh, this is like it's like meeting the president or something. And Coach Izzo just goes, I'm just a basketball coach. You know, I'm not the president or the governor or anything like that. Like I'm just a simple guy who loves loves and has great a great passion for what he does i'm just a basketball coach and when i heard him say that i was like you know he's just like anybody else you know the only difference is is he's one of the best basketball coaches in the world but he's so humble and he makes sure that people are taken care of whether it's his own players his coaches the managers um you know our, our office secretaries at michigan state or the students at michigan state just whoever like he just goes above and beyond for people and so you know i've, I've been so blessed in my life to known him for as long as I have. I mean, I've known him for, you know, 25 years now. Like I, I first met him when I was eight years old and I told him the first time I met him that I was going to play for him. And I think in that moment, he was like, oh, that's cute. It's a little eight year old telling me he's going to come play for me in 10 years. But that became a reality. I mean, he recruited me in high school. He offered me a preferred walk on spot right out of the gate, but he also encouraged me to take the full right offer to Grand Valley State because he knew that you know, free school is free school. It's going to change your life. And it did. And it was also a way for me to get, you know, out of town for a couple of years and just be my own person. And so, but he, he means a lot to me. And whenever he and I get a chance to talk and catch up, like, you know, those are moments that I always enjoy. And, and I always get, I always get at least one thing out of him as far as like, 
you know, inspiration or as far as like, you know, certain comments he may make, I'm making sure that I continue to do what I'm doing. And so, but he's just been an incredible part of my life. And, you know, I'm so blessed to not only call him, you know, my coach, not only proud to call him a friend, but proud to call him like a father, like figure. Cause that, that's what he is to a lot of us. He is a father to each and every single one of us because of just what he does for us and what he does for Michigan state university in general. Thank you for that. I would imagine for you, it was pretty much a no brainer to ask him to write the forward. What was his reaction? <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, it was, it was definitely a no brainer. Um, you know, I asked him, you know, I, I actually called him and asked him, he, he goes, yeah, absolutely. Like I'd, I'd be honored to. And so he didn't even hesitate. And so for, for him to, to write the forward and then for me to read it, it brought back a lot of really great memories. It really did. Um, you know, from the time I took his seat on the bus when I was 10 years old on a road trip to Minnesota um, to, you know, just days as a player. Um, it, it really meant a lot to me. And I know a lot of people who read that, you know, read coaches as forward are really going to realize that, you know, just what kind of relationship like he and I really do have. Time for our final break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Anthony Iani. Are you a reader? Do you do you do you read for pleasure or um, you know, I always ask the question of my authors what they what they like to read. Um, do you have preferred genres or authors? Oh man, so for me, um, you know, growing up, I always loved reading John Wooden books. Um, I you know, John Wooden who coached UCLA to like geez, like I could say a thousand national championships, um, but I'm pretty sure it was like 11 or something like that. And, but just reading his books, you know, when I was growing up in high school, just kind of like reading his philosophy. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, you know, when I was in high school, we read, um, oh man. What was, so we, we read the great Gatsby when I was in high school. I really thought that, that was one of my favorite books to read, um, in high school, especially, um, you know, so at times, like if I see like a really good, like, um, nonfiction, you know, sports memoir, just like a, you know, it didn't have to be a sports memoir, just like a motivational memoir in general, like I'll definitely pick it up and I'll start reading it. So, cause what I like to try to do, Sarah, is like, you know, I try to, I kind of, I want to pick the brain, like just pick, like just pick, you know, different ideas and like kind of pick people's authors brains a little bit about what they write and kind of get like different input on things from other people's backgrounds. And so you know, that's what, that's what kind of keeps my stuff, you know, fresh uh, from a speaking standpoint is just reading about what other motivational speakers or athletes or even, uh, or actors may have been through in their life. So if it's anything nonfiction or anything memoir, um, you know, I'm definitely picking it up and reading it. And it doesn't have to be sports. It could be people, you know, it could be scientists, it could be actors, actresses, it could be, you know, TV shows, whatever, because I want to try and learn about what other individuals have gone through in their life and what perspectives they have in life as well. How about your kids? What are they reading these days? I'm totally nosy about what people read. <laughs> <laughs> so my, um, so my youngest is four, so he's not quite there yet, but my oldest, um, he actually finished, uh, his first chapter book. It was like short chapter book. It was, uh, it was Captain Underpants. Um, so <laughs> he, he, he's starting to get really big into those books now, but he, uh, he's also been reading books about, you know, LeBron James, he's been reading different books about, you know, you know, dinosaurs and animals and tigers and lions. So what his teacher has done is, you know, they bring a book home like every day from school and then they'll read it and he'll read it before he goes to sleep. And so, I mean, my, he, he's all, he's, he's in all different kinds of things. So, um, but the last book he just finished up a couple of days ago was one of the Captain Underpants books. And he, you know, I, I read those in elementary school and he asked me the other day, like, oh, have you read these? I'm like, yeah, believe it or not, I read it when I was 10 years old. So about 23 years ago. <laughs> so 
it, it's crazy for me to think how, you know, I, I was reading some of those books um, when I was in elementary school. And now some of those books are still, you know, relevant today, um, you know, for my kids to read. And so it's, it's just crazy to think how, you know, I was in their shoes once and how he just loves to read. And so, um, so that's, that's the important thing to me is that he, he loves doing something, you know, especially reading. So that, that puts a smile on my face every day. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe Captain Underpants has been around that long. Um, I know, right? <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit old, but that's okay. <laughs> you, you and me both. <laughs> um, how about social media presence? Do you have a website uh, for the book or for your speaking career? Where can people interact with you um, on the internet, on social media? Yep. So I have my website, which is anthonyiany.com. Um, the links to the book is on there as well. So if people want to buy the book, they can click on the links on my website. Um, if they would like to see me speak, whether it's in their school conferences or events, um, I have a speaking request page as well that people can go to. Uh, they can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at AI44LYD. And on Instagram, my handle there is at AIGameChanger44. So we've talked about the book. We've talked about um, a variety of things during our time together. Is there anything, though, that we haven't covered that you were hoping to talk about during this period? I think we pretty much hit the nail on the head with everything. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate um, you talking to me uh, about your experiences and especially about your book, Centered Autism, Basketball, and One Athlete's Dreams. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Thank you once again to Anthony for joining me to talk about Centered, uh, as well as the work he is currently doing as a speaker, a speaker for autism, um, an advocate for autism, etc. I have one random silly story for you as we're wrapping things up, and that is earlier my mother-in-law and my husband were talking about basketball. My mother-in-law is a huge basketball fan. And so she calls and they talk about games and players and what's going on. And I usually just kind of tune in and out because I I don't know that much about specific games and teams, but they started talking about Draymond Green. And I, I wanted to pop in and be like, hey, oh my gosh, I just talked to this guy who wrote this book and he played on a college basketball team with Draymond Green. And then my brain was like, shut up, nobody cares about your four degrees of separation. <laughs> I mean, maybe they would have cared, but I was like, they're talking about basketball. They don't need you to jump in with your random. I just talked to a guy who knows a guy who did (laughs) this thing. (laughs) And actually, I'm sure my mother-in-law would have found that interesting, but uh, the subject got changed and they start talking about something else. And so I didn't interrupt, but my brain is a weird place, y'all. I said it at the beginning, send help. Um, But that's that's my, my story about however many degrees of separation that is. So thank you again to Anthony. Thank you, as always, um, for joining me to listen to another author interview. I hope you will join me on Tuesday. We're going to be switching to a romance novel, actually a series of romance novels, The Riches and Royals Romances. They are by Kelly Z. Riley. The first book in that series is called Read My Lips, and so she will be joining me to talk about not only that book, Read My Lips, but also The Riches and Royals Romances as a series. So join me for that. In the meantime, if you are a fan of this podcast, please do me the honor of leaving a review. That definitely helps written, starred, whatever is just easiest for you to do at any given point, but um, it does help us to get the, get the podcast out to more listeners. Also, follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I love to hear from listeners. Let me know what's on your mind. And um, as always, hope that you are having a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, and I hope that your days and the week ahead involves plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.